This is the Grade 11 IT Prac exam from the Eastern Cape for November 2018. And this is the last video um, dealing with question 4.4. Okay, in this uh, question, we are dealing with an array called Array Items, which has a whole bunch of food and drink items, and we separated them in the previous questions. But in question 4.4, it says we must write a method called found that will receive, as, uh, receive an item as a parameter and return whether the item was found or true or false. So it's basically a Boolean function. I'm going to read further just to get a bit of clarity of how we're going to use this function. And then we're going to have a button which uses the found method and it will just display whether you it is there or not. But the key thing here is which they should have mentioned in the first part. The, if the user types in the word chips, it must say yes it found it because chips is part of a particular word. So it's not asking if it's found the exact wording of the item. but so if we search for the word plate, it must say yes, because there is the word plate in one of the items. Okay, so that's how it must work. So that gives us a bit of clarity on how this found function must work. I wish they would have specified that in the actual question. So that's a little bad technique there, but we've look, I've looked ahead and saw the potential problems, so I can warn you for this question. Um, so if you did this question in an exam, you might have had to go back to your question 4.4.1 to make alterations to it once you saw this information. So let's first of all make our function. We're making a Boolean function. Put in the boo back in the Boolean. So there we go. We're going to make a Boolean function over here. Function, and we're going to call it found. And it's going to take in a parameter, which is the item that we're looking for. So a uh, find, let's call it as find of type string, I'm assuming, because it'll be some sort of text. And we will be returning a Boolean, a true or false. So that's the parameter for this function. Press Control, Shift, C. And now we are at the part where we can write the code for our found function. And if you remember how the functions work when it comes to um, looking through an array or searching for an array, we're going to have a variable called B flag. I'll make that a boolean and that will tell me if they found it or not. Um, I'm going to need a looping variable, so I'm going to make an R variable of type integer. Um, and we are going to do the following. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to set B flag to false. I'm going to assume it doesn't exist in the array. If I find it, then I'll set B flag to, to true. Okay, so we're going to go through the array. Now, there are two ways that it would, I want to make this efficient. There are two reasons why I would stop searching an array. The one reason is when I reach the end of the array, then I'm going to stop looking. So then you could technically say use a for loop that goes from 1 to 22, because that's how many items are in our array. Because we're going to be looking through the array items um, array. That's one way of doing it. But the problem with that is that if we find what we're looking for, it's going to continually look for all the, through all the other items. So I don't need to do that. This, um, if you are creating a list of all the items, then you would do something like that. But in this case, we just once we find it, we know it's there, we can stop. So there are two reasons why we would stop searching for the item. One is when we've reached the end of the array, or two, we found it already. Those are our two scenarios. So we're going to use a while loop. And because we're using a while loop, we don't have a looping variable that manually goes one, two. We have to actually create it. So there's my R variable. I'm going to do the fun. I'm going to automatically set it to zero over here. And then inside this loop, I'm going to increase it by one every single time. Okay. So that's creating my looping variable that's going one, two, three. And while R is less than equal to the number of items in the array, which is 20. While it's less than that, keep looking, because we haven't reached the end of the array. The moment it gets above 22, then there's no more items. Don't worry about it. OK. Actually, we can go less than 20, because when it does, if it's less than 20, you'll go to there. OK. So are we happy with that? So that means go to the end of the array. But when we find it, when we find what we're looking for, we are going to set B flag to true. So while we are still looking for an item, or while B flag is equal to false, we're going to keep looking. Okay? 
actually not all and while these two criteria are both true while we are not at the end of the file and we haven't found it keep looking the moment one of those things happen the moment we reach the end of the of the array stop looking so then that'll be false that'll stop because they're not both true or when we find it when the b flag changes to a true then we can stop looking so let's have a look what are we going to do we're going to if now we want to find if s find is somewhere inside the array so we're actually going to use the pos function if s find is somewhere in array items r if it is there it'll be some sort of number if it's not there if the word chips isn't in that variable then it will return a zero so if it's not equal to zero or greater than zero array item r is that correct is array item i think it's array item then we have found it then i can set my b flag variable to true okay so let's recap we set it to a one okay so r zero we're not at the end it's still it's a one check position one if it's if s find is somewhere in there it'll set the b factor if it's not it'll move to the next one it'll go to number two number three number four when it gets to number 22 let's just test it if it gets to like let's say 21 if it's 21 increase to 21 checks position 21 if it's there do it okay then it comes out is 21 less than 22 yes so it'll makes it a 22 check position 22 if it's there no, we are at the end of the array we don't need to go beyond that so it'll stop over there okay so there we go now once we've gone through that entire loop if b flag is still a false after we've checked everything that means it reached the end and stopped and b flag didn't change which means it's not there so then we can say our if b flag is false then our result will be false if it's not false then our result will be true so if we didn't find it then send back false but if we did find it send back true or the easiest way would just be result equals b flag you could do that as well okay i'm just saying this so that you understand why it's been done so go through the go through the array go until we find it or until we reach the end of the array the moment we find it set b flag to true and that means this will stop because b flag is not true not false anymore it'll stop while it while it is false keep looking while we're not at the end of the array keep looking if one of those things happen stop looking because we then uh, don't need to look anymore and if b flag is false at the end of that whole process that means we went through everything and didn't find it so send back hey false we didn't find it else hey we did find it there's a true done so that's our function now if we go to our button we're going to go to the button now and now we're going to use that function so search for an item so what they want us to do the user must enter in item they're looking for in the input box so let's get our input some sort of string variable s input of type input box um item name item you are looking for and i'm just going to put in the word chips for now so that's the default there that's going to return a string which goes into a string so no converting needs to happen there no conversions the method found must be called and an appropriate message must be displayed whether the item is in the menu or not so that's it so item is on the menu or item is not on the menu see this is only six marks so that's a quick little quick little question so we do the input i'm just going to use my if found and what's my argument that's going in it's going to be whatever is inside here s input if that equals true we don't have to put that part there but i'm just showing you so take whatever's in s input put it into found whatever's in here will then be jump up to my found where is my found I'll press control find and there there and it jumped down to here s find will be whatever's in s input it'll look for s input technically in the array if it finds it it'll send back true if it's not it'll send back false so if s if found with that parameter or that argument is equal to true then it means it's there then we can show a message 
just like they wanted. What did they want? Item is on the menu. Item is on the menu. But if it's not found, if it if found returns a false, then we can do this exact same is not on the menu. I don't know, I think that's all they wanted. So you see how we're using our found function. If it's true, then say it's on the menu. If it's not, so it'll take whatever's in there, it'll push it into this, where is it, over here? Boom. It'll push it into that variable there, that parameter. So whatever is in S found in this function will be whatever was originally in S input. Okay, if you're not too sure about function and procedures, go look at our video series on function and procedures to explain that concept. So let's run it. This one we don't need to worry about the other items because it's using array items. So if we're searching for the word chips, it says item is on the menu. But if we search for the item hot dog, I don't know if hot dogs are on the menu. Item is not on the menu. What about if we are searching for mud? I'm hoping there's no mud in our menu. No, there's no mud in the menu. So there we go. That's working. Okay. So there we go. That's question 4.4. If you need more revision for other Delphi um, con content, particularly for the RT syllabus, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.